we're ready to start chi-squared for two-way tables. This is going to be more useful to us because just looking at a one-way table, you have to know the expected values or the theoretical values ahead of time. So what we want to do now is we want to look at questions like, does race play a role in arrests? or is violence on TV related to violence in the home? So what we wanna do is that we want to look at the correlation between two categorical variables. We have two hypotheses. Our null hypothesis is that two variables are independent, that means that they're not related, or that two variables are dependent, which means that they're correlated. So our assumptions are always that the two variables are independent, and we should see the same proportions in each category. So for example, suppose that a company has 40 men and 60 women applying for a management position. There's going to be 10 spots open for the management position, and we would expect to see the same proportion of men and women in these proportions as we see in the entire company. So if we have 40 men and 60 women for the 10 management positions, we would expect to see four men and six women hired. So what we do see is that out of the 40 men, we see that eight are hired and 32 are not hired. For women, we see that two are hired and 58 are not hired. So we have that um, displayed in this two-way table. So our expectations like our observations, how are they different? Now we use proportions to figure out what the expected value should be, but there's actually a formula for that. The formula for the expected values is that you're gonna take the row total and the column total for that cell and divide it by the grand total. Our chi-square equation is also going to be the same, so it's going to be the expected minus the observed, or the other way around, doesn't matter. Square that and divide that by the expected value. Then you're going to add those up for every single cell. We also need the degrees of freedom. For a two-way table, this is going to be calculated by the number of categories in the row minus one times the number of categories in the columns minus one. We also need to state the same conditions as we did last time, which is that it must be random and each cell must contain a count of at least five for the expected count. So remember, it's not the observed count, it's the expected count. So using all this, let's actually just dive in and start performing a chi-square test. So let's look at the table that we had before. So we had eight men hired, 32 not hired. We had two women hired and 58 not hired. So the first thing we want to do is state the null and alternative hypothesis. We have to look at what our two variables are. So our one variable is employment and the other variable is gender. So our null hypothesis is that employment and gender are independent. Our alternative hypothesis is that employment and gender are not independent. The next thing we want to do is calculate the expected value. So when we calculate the expected value for each cell, what that means is that we want to calculate the expected value that you are a man and that you were hired, that you were a man and you were not hired, a woman that was hired, and the counts for women that were not hired. So to do this, we're just going to do it for one of the expected values. So what's the actual expected value that a man was hired? So we're going to take the column total, which is 10, times the row total, which was 40, and we're going to divide that by the grand total, which means that we're looking at 100 people total. When we do that, we're going to get an expected value of 4. Now, I have just calculated all the expected values for you. They show up in the parentheses. So for example, we had 32 that were not hired, but we would have seen, or we would expect to see, 36 not hired. For women, we would expect to see six hired, but we saw that two were hired. And for not hired, we would expect to see 54 not hired, but we saw 58. Now when we calculate the chi-squared, what we want to do is that we want to see what's the difference between these observations and the expected. So for chi-squared, we are going to have 8 minus 4 squared divided by 4 plus 32 minus 36 squared divided by 36, two minus six squared divided by six, plus 58 minus 54 squared divided by 54, and you're gonna get a chi-square of 7.4074. Next, before we actually run our hypothesis, we wanna calculate the degrees of freedom. So 
In our rows, we have two rows, men and women, so it's going to be 2 minus 1. For our columns, we have hired and not hired, so we have two of them, so it's going to be 2 minus 1. That's going to equal just one degree of freedom. Now, if we let alpha equal 0 0.05, are we going to reject or fail to reject our null hypothesis? So if we take this information and we plug it into a chi-square calculator, we're going to find that p equals 0 0.0065. That's a lot lower than that significance level, so we have found evidence that these two variables are not independent. So maybe your gender does influence your um, ability to be hired. Now, I said if we plug this into a chi-squared calculator, we're going to find p equals 0065. So I'm going to show you a couple of those calculators right now and how to use them. All right, I'm using the GeoGebra chi-squared test for independence. A link for this is found on your course. So the first thing I have to put in is the degrees of freedom. So our degrees of freedom were 1. Notice, just like the previous lecture, that I said that this would get steeper the less degrees of freedom you have, but it's going to get more normal the higher degrees of freedom are. So if our degrees of freedom were 40 instead, we can see that starts to normal out. So our degrees of freedom are 1. The next thing we need to do is enter our chi-square. So our chi-square value was 7.4074. And it outputs that p-value of 0 0.0065. Here's another chi-square calculator. Again, the link to this is found on your um, course content. So the first thing we want to do is that we want to set this up so it's the same size. So we're going to use these scroll bars at the side to make sure that this is a 2 by 2. And then we're going to enter the observations inside of this table. So we have 8, 32, 2, and 58. Right away what we see is that it gives us an output for the chi-square, the degrees of freedom, and it also gives you the p-value. If you scroll down a little bit, what you'll see in this window is that you're going to see the actual values, but you'll also see the expected values. The other really great thing about this is that it gives you a warning. It says, warning, actual values are less than 5, results not reliable. Remember, for this test to actually be reliable, it has to be not only random, but our expected counts should be more than five. You can also use the StatCo if you have that downloaded. Again, what you're going to do in these cells is you're going to list out the observations just as you see them in the table. So we're going to have 8, 32, 2, and 58. No need to input the totals. Now we're going to highlight those four. We're going to go to statistics in that top ribbon. We're going to go to multinomial experiments. And then we're going to go to the chi-square contingency table. Contingency table is just another word for a two-way table. We're going to select C1 and C2 and add them to the list. You can also do this one by one. Make sure that your significance level is at the level you want. So ours is 0 0.05, so we're good to go. So we can press OK. And then it will pop up with a table. So see, this table is the same one as we had before. In parentheses is going to be the expected count, which we already calculated. And if you scroll down again, it will tell you the significance level, degrees of freedom, chi-squared value, critical value, which we don't need, and the p-value. If you want a screen reader to read this output, it won't do it on its own. What you have to do is that you have to control A to copy it all. If you paste it into a Word document, then the Word document will read the output of the table. All right, so for this next example, I want you to try this one on your own and we will check our answers using technology and I'll also walk you through it. So a survey recently asked males and females, do you agree with the statement that violence on television causes violence in the home? The results are below. So we have females and males, and we have opinions ranging from strongly agree, agree, neutral, disagree, to strongly disagree. So what I would like you to do on your own is I want you to pause the video, and I want you to state the null and alternative hypothesis, calculate the expected values. So try calculating a couple of them by hand and then using technology just to check your work and input the rest of those expected values. Calculate chi-squared. So again, um, there's going to be 10 values, so you can do it by hand or you can use technology. Um, I don't have a preference. Calculate the degrees of freedom. Let alpha equal 0 0.05 and answer the question, do we reject or fail to reject the null hypothesis? So 
we want to state the null and alternative hypothesis. So first, one of our variables is opinions. The second variable is gender. Opinion and gender are either independent, which is going to be our null hypothesis. Alternative is that opinion and gender are not independent. We want to calculate the expected values. There's going to be a lot of calculations. So what I did here is that I just calculated one expected value, which was for the cell neutral and female. So we had 76 for our observation to calculate our expected. We're going to take that column total, which is 741. Multiply it by our row total, which was 195, and then divide it by the total, which was 1690. So remember, that's a grand total. That is going to give us an expected value of 81.12. Now remember, our actual observations always have to be whole numbers, but our expected can be a fraction or decimal that's totally okay. All right, if you input this into technology, you're going to see the rest of these values should pop up. Remember, don't input the totals when you do that, so don't input the column or the row totals. Next is we want to calculate chi-squared, so again you can do that using technology or you can do it by hand. Using technology you should get a chi-square of 9.7934. Calculating the degrees of freedom, so we have five different categories for opinions and five, or not five, two for the gender in this case. So we are going to have 5 minus 1 times 2 minus 1, so we're going to have 4 degrees of freedom. If we let alpha equal 0 0.05, do we reject or fail to reject the null hypothesis? So if we take this information and plug it in to our um, chi-square calculator or some other technology, what we're going to get is our p-value is going to be 0 0.0441. Since that's less than 0 0.05, we have found evidence that these two variables are not independent. Now, just a word to the wise, remember, just because two things are not independent doesn't necessarily mean that there's a causation between them, there's just a correlation. So there could be a lurking or a um, confounding variable hiding in there. So what you have to do is that you actually have to do more research.